Welcome back to the channel. I've been testing as many free DAWs as possible, and in this video, I wanna show you my favorites, but also briefly discuss the pros and cons of all the software that I tested in case one of them's right for you. So there's plenty of timestamps and chapter markers if you just wanna find out about one of the DAWs in particular, but let's waste no time and just get right into it. Firstly, it's important to understand that there's no perfect software for everyone, of course, it really depends what you wanna do with it. So I have three or four favorites, and then I'll address the rest. So before we get to the serious ones and the more complex stuff, if you simply want to just use your computer to record a microphone, just record a performance and then export it and not do anything fancy, I'd recommend downloading Audacity. It's lightweight, but it's very stable. It's very sort of trustworthy. It's never crashed on me at least but it's very limited. You're not going to be able to use virtual instruments, sort of arrange and sequence stuff. So for people that wanna do more than that, you know, you wanna record multiple microphones, layer up vocals, start arranging and composing, and also start using some virtual instruments and effects, I would recommend using Studio One Prime. I think out of all the ones on the list, it's probably one of the easiest to understand, get up and running in. It has a very traditional, but also intuitive workflow. I think that it's a great DAW to start understanding the basics of sort of sound engineering and audio engineering, uh, but it does come with one big limitation, which is that while you can stack up loads of tracks, edit, compose, use their virtual instruments and effects, you can't use third-party plugins, so you can't use synthesizers and effect plugins from other developers. And for many people, this is a complete deal breaker. This DAW is gonna be great for you know singer-songwriters, people that are recording a lot of instruments, but it's probably not gonna be suitable if you wanna start sequencing and creating electronic music. For someone looking for a more unlimited DAW, I would recommend Waveform 11 Free by Traction. But there's a few important things, and that is that you have to go into the settings and make sure that you're in the free mode, otherwise it keeps giving you this sort of trial warning message that you need to buy the software. But once you're in the free mode, this is a really special piece of software. It works on PC, Mac, and Linux, and it was very stable on my machine. This software, and especially the GUI, took quite a long time to grow on me. I was trying to treat it like a traditional audio software, where really this is trying to do things a little bit differently. It sort of has a one page layout where it tries to put everything important all on one screen. And you can sort of maximize windows, which really helps me like pulling the whole mixer in, into shot, but it's trying to be a very sort of fast and fluid workflow. I think the GUI could do with some optimization, but virtually every feature I could possibly think of needing was there and a ton more. I was highly impressed by the feature set. The piano roll especially was very easy to draw your melodies and chords. You can pull in any third party plugins and they work great. But there is one issue and that's that on Windows, on my PC at least, I had issues with system scaling. So if I had the Windows scaling at anything other than 100%, the plugins and the interface just didn't really work properly. So I know that this isn't a problem for most people, but some people like me, you have maybe a high resolution monitor and then you increase the system scaling a little bit, that means that the plugins might not work right for you and you might have to use this on 100% scaling. But I know that this could be an issue that could potentially just be fixed in a future update. I really felt like this was one of the only programs where I felt like I could do anything I wanted. And the only thing limiting me was my own actual sort of creativity and my own imagination and not the tools in the software. So that's why it's sort of my top pick for a free DAW. So now I wanna talk through all the other ones. Some of them got quite close and, the, and you might think that they're better for you. So I wanna discuss all the other softwares I tested. The first one was from BandLab and it's a software called Cakewalk and it's a more traditional DAW. I felt that it was starting to get a little bit dated, but it's closer to Studio One or Pro Tools. If you want a more traditional DAW like that, but you wanna be able to use your third party plugins, this is a good option. So try it out, see if it works for you. The next one is for Mac users, and this is simply GarageBand. It comes free if you have a Mac computer, and honestly, it's a great piece of software. The reason it's not one of my favorites is that it's a little bit too simplistic. You can't do sort of complex mixing and mastering and complex arrangement tasks, but for simply recording stuff, getting some ideas down, some loops, or, or well, more than ideas, to be honest, you could make professional sounding music in this. I thought that it was a great option. 
it's just a little bit too simplistic and I think that once you've been using it for a few weeks you're going to run into a lot of sort of hurdles and uh, times when you have an idea but you just can't do it because the software doesn't let you get that idea down into the DAW. The next software I tested was BandLab, which is an online DAW, so it's browser-based and they do have a mobile app. I was impressed by the fact that the online DAW actually worked. It was stable, I could arrange some loops, have some fun in it. It was very easy to navigate. That's something I would say is a big pro for the software. Easy to navigate, easy to understand what was going on, but I just felt it was far too limited to be considered a professional DAW and I also like having my software be standalone. I don't like having to be connected to the internet for my software to work, but I would uh, sort of give them credit for the fact that they've managed to make this DAW work inside a browser. I thought it was a very accessible and easy way to make some fun music. Soundbridge was one of the most interesting softwares I tested because many of the reviews online are, are highly favorable and I think it's because they're written by people who are already audio engineers and understand a lot of how these softwares work. But I found that while the feature set was incredible, I just felt that the learning curve was very steep and very long. I felt that if you were a beginner, this would be a pretty difficult software to understand. I feel there's a lot of optimizations that could be made with the GUI, but just in general, I found things to be not as fluid and seamless as they were in Studio One Prime and in Waveform. If, however, you already know how DAWs tend to work, you understand a lot of the principles of audio engineering, then this software isn't, isn't so confusing and it might actually be a good choice if you like the way it works, you like the workflow and the user interface. It's clearly a very powerful software. I just think that most people looking for a free DAW are also beginners or just hobbyists that don't know absolutely everything about audio engineering yet. And for that reason, I think some of the other DAWs were just a little bit more easy to understand. Ohm Studio was another interesting one because I couldn't even download it. The website didn't have an SSL certificate, which is a pretty critical safety feature on a website, so I wouldn't download from it. But I also know that had I managed to download and get it working, the free version doesn't let you export in high quality. I believe it's just OGG. You can't export WAV files, and for that reason, it's just a, a complete sort of no, stay away. If you can't actually export your music in high quality, I don't think there's a, a point in using the software. Another software I tested was LMMS, which was one of the most confusing softwares I've ever used in my life. It was almost sort of laughably complex. It's clear that many users managed to sequence and arrange great sounding music in there, but for a beginner, it was the most complex software I've ever used. And if you learn LMMS, almost none of the workflow is going to be able to be transferred to any other audio software. Of course, you know, understanding arrangement, mixing and mastering, that will that knowledge will stay with you no matter what software you use. But this was such a unique ecosystem and not a very pretty or intuitive ecosystem. Um, I felt that it's not a good option for beginners uh, who are looking for something quick and easy. The final one is the FL Studio 20 trial, which isn't marketed as a free DAW, so it's sort of unfair to put it on the list but many people ask me to talk about it. And I think it's a brilliant piece of software because they let you use the DAW completely unlimited, but they don't let you open projects that you have saved. So that's obviously a massive limitation. It's not designed to be or marketed as a free unlimited DAW. It's just supposed to be a trial. And if you like the workflow, then you can invest and buy one of the other versions of FL Studio. And I do think FL Studio is the most affordable professional audio engineering software available at the moment, uh, at least that I know of. I think even though all the others are incredibly powerful, you know, Studio One, Ableton Pro Tools, they all just come at a higher cost. And a final thought I want to add, just like any other hobby, you might want to just get working with some free stuff, some trials, and just very slowly sort of save up a little pot of cash on the side, you know, like a piggy bank. And then one day when you're ready to invest more in your hobby, maybe you've been producing for six months or a year or two, and you maybe you want to move on to a software that makes things easier for you, makes things faster, then you might want to use some of that and invest in one of the other softwares. But what's what I find is amazing is that almost all the companies offer these trials and demos, and that just means that we can try them out first. 
so we don't have to risk losing a load of money on a software that just doesn't click with us. One of the biggest things I've learned through running this channel is just simply how different everyone is. One software works for someone and it doesn't work at all for another person. So I hope this video sort of steered you in one direction or another and helped you figure out what's right for you. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.